kind of assign some circle assignments for our potluck lunch. And of course, we know that's one of the more important parts of our mission conference. And so we thank uh, those that are involved in uh, making that happen and the different uh, things that that represents for us on the October 2nd. So uh, I, there's other things going on, but the potluck lunch, really, we want you to really be aware that that's happening and ready for, for that. So... Uh, we'll eat other times during a mission conference too, but usually that's the, that's the big deal, the potluck lunch. It also represents a time for you to connect again with Rod and Christiana and uh, to hear a, a, a different perspective on kind of what ministry is looking like these days in uh, different parts of the world and uh, in their particular area of responsibility also. Maybe you'll be thinking about that, some of the questions you have about uh, ministry around the world and uh, what is happening these days and how the Lord is using different people in different places and uh, how it looks these days for our missionaries that we've sent around the world. The Christian Missionary Alliance has some 600 missionaries sent out from North America and they serve in a variety of places. No, I'm sure one person's ministry looks uh, the same as the others. I spent uh, uh, three weeks with friends of mine that uh, have a ministry in uh, Africa. It, and uh, we went to Burkina Faso, what was that now, two years ago or something like that. And uh, so I thought that that's really what ministry in Africa looked like until... Right? I began to talk with other friends whose ministry takes place in a totally different context, uses very different tools than the ones that I was able to witness. There really is no single pattern for what uh, a missionary service looks like. The best we can do is try and connect well with individuals involved in the work and take, uh, take to heart what the Lord is using in their circumstances. And then as the opportunities come, learn more and more about what goes on. One of the ways that you can do that, to broaden your idea of what the ministry of the Christian Missionary looks, Alliance looks like, is through our magazine, the Alliance Life magazine. Now, for some of you, you, you already get the magazine. But if you don't get the Alliance Life magazine and you would like to receive it, right, it's free and I'd be happy to sign you up. All right, so you just take one of the information cards in the pew racks in front of you and you write down your mailing address and you'll actually get a paper copy of the Alliance Life magazine coming in your mailbox. I know that still, we, magazines still can come in your mailbox, right? Everything doesn't have to be online. But if you would like to read the articles online, cmalliance.org is your spot. And you can see those, uh, those stories as well as video pieces that are produced from across the Alliance on a regular basis being updated on the Alliance website. So if you want a magazine showing up in your mailbox and you're not currently getting it, right, just give me your address and I'll be happy to send that subscription in and, and hope that it gets processed correctly. <laughs> well... Again, we're really happy to have this time to share with you today. We trust that uh, as you're here, that the Lord knows, knows what you need. He knows the process that he's been at work in your heart and life and is inviting you again for this time. To take this time out and to focus in a special way on what he's saying, to enter into our time of worship, to find encouragement from the fact that you are not alone in the reality of walking by faith each day. So Heavenly Father, thank you too for this time. Thank you for the different challenges that you have placed in front of us in the, the past week, for the different ways in which you've demonstrated that our strength is not enough, but your grace is made perfect in weakness. Lord, we ask again that in this time our hearts can open to you for this worship season. Not only that, but we can connect in a way that makes a difference for the coming days, that you can continue to do your work in each one of us. Thank you, Father. But ask that you would, by your Spirit, demonstrate your presence here this morning. In your name I ask it. Amen.
morning. <laughs> well, that was heartfelt. <laughs> We're going to sing about an invitation this morning. An invitation for you to open up your heart to him. An invitation for you to come and worship him. He's here. Are you? Let's all stand. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. that you came. Greet one another and tell them you're glad to see them.
that our lips would not be sealed, that would be open to him and to praise his name under any circumstance that you're going through right now. So, now we're going to change a little bit. I want to just have you picture this, like, like maybe singing a love song to your child. You ever had that moment where you had a child sitting on your lap and you sang them to sleep or whatever, or just sing to them because you love them? This is what this is. Just picture yourself. I want you to sing praises unto him. And just sing it as a prayerful song to him that we just praise him and all the things we say and do this morning. Oh, 
searching your heart when my will becomes enthralled in your love when all things that surround me come shadows in the light of you Thank you, worship team. One of the uh, earlier songs that uh, they led us in said, now is, the, now is the time to worship. Sometimes we sing that and we think, oh, it's Sunday morning, it's time to worship, right? Now's the time, it's, uh, you know, 10.45, Sunday morning, worship time. But the song really isn't talking about Sunday morning as worship time. It's talking about this day, this life. Now, as you live, the time that God has given us, it's the time to live for Him. It's to let that reality of His, well, who He is, be reflected in how we respond, how we live each day. Now, now is the time. Heavenly Father, I, I, I say that, and we come, and we go through the motions, and yet the, the calling of that, the, the reality of worshiping you now, to being your people, not, not just your Sunday morning gatherers, but the people that live each day for you is a challenge so big, so, so overwhelming, that it brings us to the point where we just have to depend upon you. We, we have to recognize that there is only one way that that happens. And that is when we come to a daily kind of surrender, an eager seeking after you, a willingness to listen and respond and to develop those skills of, well, serving you in our everyday lives. In the places you've given us to work and the homes in which you have placed us in the classrooms and the neighborhoods, 
Those are the places. That is where we're called to. That's the now. That's the now that we serve you in. And Lord, it's so easy to be distracted from that. To be overwhelmed by it and so we turn aside from the challenge rather than learning and growing in our dependence upon you. So Lord, we come and ask for your help. Not only do we need you, but we recognize that our world needs you, whether that's our, our country today struggling to, to find political direction and to put people into offices of authority that, that represent well your ethic about life and about uh, justice and, and a sense of responsibility for one another. Lord, from every, from every office within our country, from the, uh, the presidency, through the Congress, through the state legislature and governor, into our, our neighborhoods and the, the ones that are on the planning boards and volunteer for the school boards. Lord, every, every level of authority, Father, we ask that your voice, your work, your people can find their voice. And those that you have placed in those positions of authority can recognize their responsibility, not just to the community, but really to you, Father, for what we do with what we've been entrusted. Lord, around our world today, we pray for our brothers and sisters, especially in those places where they have lost the security of their homes and find themselves dependent on the kindness of strangers and are seeking to wonder what their life looks like. And they, Father, we ask for a sense of your presence with them, for uh, an opportunity for them to recognize, even in those circumstances, the opportunities that you give them to represent you well, even as they have lost so much. Father, again, would you continue to be glorified in our world? Would you take your grace and make it so attractive, not only so that we can learn to rely on it, but that those around us can come to seek it for themselves. In your name we pray. Father, this morning, thank you for the opportunity to return to you part of what you've entrusted to us, to invest in a, a different way, in this way, into those kingdom of yours. So, Father, I ask your blessing on our offering and on each gift and each giver. In your name I pray. Amen. Ushers, would you come and receive our offering?
Well, again, good morning to everybody and uh, welcome. We have been taking our time and been talking about uh, the, the parables that Jesus told about the kingdom of, of heaven. In fact, there comes a period of time in Jesus' ministry where Matthew tells us that he spoke all these things to the crowd in parables and he didn't say anything to them without using a parable. The, the, the tool, right, that he engages, this, this story that he picks to kind of penetrate through all of people's defenses that they built up, this kind of uh, action-packed moment where people get engaged with what Jesus is saying and where it seeks to create a desire to understand a parable, right? And in Matthew 13, he gives us a series of seven parables. Now, there's lots of parables in the New Testament, perhaps something like 46 of them. And in this series, we've just been picking these seven that are found in Matthew chapter 13, these parables of the kingdom. We began with kind of that parable of the sower, one of the more uh, well-known of the parables and the, the difference between the soil that finally produces a crop, some 30-fold, some 60, some 100-fold, is that for some people, there seems to be an eagerness to hear, a willingness to receive the seed. Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. I mean, there's a receptivity that's involved in people who produce for Christ's kingdom. The next one is this parable of the, the weeds, right? The wheat and weeds sown together across the earth in the parable. And the owner of the land says, let them grow up together. It's a picture of what the world is like in Christ's kingdom in our day, right? Today, you and I see that. It's true that both the wheat, God's people, his kingdom, and the kingdoms of this world exist together for a period of time until the end, until an end that comes when there is a separating. goes on to talk about two parables, the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast that talk about how this, the kingdom spreads, right? The mustard seed pictures how it begins small and turns into something amazing. And the parable of the yeast talks about its penetrating work, that that's how it makes its impression from the inside. It's not something that's forced on from the outside, but there is a a penetrating from within, like yeast works throughout a loaf of bread. And last week we talked about the parables of the treasure and the pearl, how that the kingdom of heaven is more valuable. It's, it's worth selling everything to obtain, and in fact it comes to us, and it becomes real to us when we willingly make that exchange. The kingdom of heaven. The final parable that we're going to look at is this parable of the net. Right? This parable of the, the net. And of all of these parables, this is the one that's the least familiar, at least to me. Right? It, it uh, isn't as much fun as some of the other ones. It's not as much fun as finding buried treasure, right? Or, or going after that pearl of great price and one day, there it is right in front of you. It's, it's, it's not that kind of parable. It's the parable that strikes really quite a more serious note, and it hits kind of its stride with this phrase where it talks about, well, the, the fiery furnace at the end of kingdom conditions that exist today. And it may be that it's last in the series of parables here in Matthew 13 for, for a very good reason, right? That they've been talking about an opportunity that exists for people to learn about the king and his kingdom, to come to understand who Jesus is and embrace his role in our hearts and, and lives. And an invitation to come and depend on him, to, to trust his work and the promise of his reward. But finally... Jesus wants to make it very clear that it's a limited time opportunity. Jesus spoke often about the dangers of living outside of his kingdom. And one time he turns to a group of teachers, a group of Pharisees, and 
asks them a pretty pointed question. He says to them, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Oh, you go, wait a minute, not one of those sermons about hell. Jesus taught a lot about hell. 